Hi, I wanted to get ready right now, and then I also wanted to share what happened this year. Um, that sort of changed me. Anyways, <laughs> as always, I'm gonna get ready and try to multitask. I'm not very good at talking and doing makeup at the same time, like you know. But yeah, let's start with foundation. This one I've been using this year. Um, <laughs> honestly, it looks really scary now. It's getting really really bad but whatever um it's almost gone which sucks okay let's see i'll start off by saying that yeah i was kind of depressed last year for maybe half a year um without knowing it like it was a slow progression and then with the slum going on and then with everything i got really busy i wasn't working out as much so i think things just affected me a lot more than it used to. That's not really what I wanted to talk about today. <laughs> Long story short, I was depressed and then when one of my favorite idols died um, in December, I, I was feeling like a lot of things. I was conflicted, I was crying, and then confused. But actually that pushed me to want to do better. It, it pushed me out of my depression. Like I. I didn't want to feel the way that I did. I, I basically didn't want to be depressed anymore. I want to refocus myself, so I try to work out a bit. What was I trying to say? Oh yeah. Uh, I've been working for years. But yeah, I was working um, in the salon, and then actually I'm not the type to take vacations. I don't really like breaks because I feel like it slows me down, but then I kind of lost motivation to work so hard. Um, anyways, this is the first vacation I took, I think, yeah, the first vacation I took where I didn't have work related with it. Um, usually I would travel if it's work related, but it's hard to allow myself to relax and take a break. Let's use this palette to keep it simple. Um, but yeah, I travel alone this time. I usually do travel with friends, but during my Hong Kong trip, I realized that I'm better alone. <laughs> but yeah, I was at LAX, I flew out of LAX and then I had a drink before my flight so the flight was really easy, it was really chill. I slept for most of it. Yeah, when I landed it was quite confusing because I'm not used to um, Japan's public transportation and then the shuttle that I was on, it was so small. Actually everything in Japan is kind of small compared to Los Angeles. But this was so small, like I remember I bumped my head and it hurt really bad. And it was kind of embarrassing because in Japan it's really, really quiet. So if anything like that happens, everyone notices. <laughs> I think the first night I just hung out with Cha. It was fun, but I don't really remember. Maybe, maybe I was tired. Of but yeah, oh yeah, it was snowing. There was a little girl who made a little snowman and it was really adorable. Um, the snowman was not what it looks like on TV, but I liked it. <laughs> it lasted for the whole trip actually, so I kept staring at it every time I leave my Airbnb. <sighs> Sorry, I'm kinda sick. So, um, I guess I have a cold. Let me get a tissue. <laughs> I got a cold. So if you see any boogers, or if I sound funny, you know why. <laughs> yeah, the next day I went to get sushi with my friend. It's actually just a random sushi place right next to my Airbnb. And it was so good. Like, it was so good. I got uh, tuna. I got an assortment of tuna. I ordered all of it. Um, it was one of the best I've ever had. If you've ever been to Japan and had the tuna, when you go back to America, you, you would not want to order tuna again. Yeah, I wasn't really doing much this day. Um, it was the first day I was traveling alone, exploring alone, and I felt weird. But after a few hours of being in Japan, then you get more comfortable with it. It's totally different than the US or at least Los Angeles. Cause you know sometimes when you go alone, like to a restaurant and you're eating alone, um, you would sit there and order dinner and maybe there's a table of four and you're the only one there and it feels weird. Yeah, so Japan they kind of have some places that are, uh, I guess from smaller groups. Sometimes you just sit alone or there'll be a bar stool counter thingy. I don't know what it's called, but basically, I didn't feel that weird being by myself um, and eating, which is really nice because I am an introvert, so I do enjoy my time alone, but, you know, 
if people are staring at you or you feel like they are, you're not going to be happy. But Japan was very comfortable in that aspect. But yeah, like I said,、um, I kind of spent the day exploring. I went to some convenience stores, some random food places, and then makeup stores. The next day, I ended up buying、um, <laughs> the foundation I was using earlier, the VT BTS one.、Uh, I kept passing by that store on the way to the train, and then I guess the advertisement worked on me because I went in there, I bought the stuff. I took selfies with the cardboard cutouts, which I swear I was the only one. It was a little embarrassing, but whatever. It's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then、um, there was like some random stuff I saw. I did remember this wall、had、some Hello Kitty stickers everywhere, and then the, the, it had funny faces on them. And I thought it was very, very, very Tokyo like.、Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just American. View of it, but it's like, damn, I looked at that wall. I was like, okay, yeah, this has a lot of personality. This is what, when I was younger, what I thought Tokyo would be like, and it was pretty cute. <laughs> but yeah, basically, the, the next day I was just exploring with Cha.、Uh, she showed me some of the places that she eats at.、Um, I got to try the takoyaki in Japan, which is totally different than the one in America. In America, it's a bit crunchier on the outside and soft on the inside.、Um, in, in Japan, it's a bit softer. And then there's more, more octopus than the one in America. Yeah. But yeah, the next day, the next day was probably one of the best days I've had in my life. And I know it's really weird to say, because I don't know, it's just really weird. Let me tell you about the day. So I decided to dress up that day a little bit more extra、um, with this jacket, you know? <laughs>、uh, I don't know why I felt like dressing up that day. It just seemed like. I don't know, I wasn't gonna do much. I didn't think I was going out, so、um, why not, right? I woke up that day, dressed up, did my. I didn't do my makeup actually because I knew I was gonna see the optometrist that day. But,、um, but yeah, woke up, went to vending machines. Oh yeah, Japan has vending machines like everywhere. Like every block, there's a vending machine with coffee and soft drinks, so it's very convenient and it's really cheap. <laughs> so, I do miss that.、Um, but yeah, I got coffee and then I went to a train station and went to、um, Cha's area. I think she's like near Asagaya, Asagaya station. I don't know. But、um, we went there and then I had ramen with Cha and Yuta. Yuta's Cha's husband, and then I,、um, I used to live with both of them when we were all in Los Angeles together. They moved to Tokyo, obviously, but yeah, that's how I know them. But yeah, the ramen that I had was the best ramen I've ever tried. I felt like I got lucky this time because the other trip,、uh, the last time I went to Tokyo, I didn't feel like the food was great. This time, everything I tried was amazing. I was so happy. <laughs> But yeah, anyways,、um, Yuta is the reason why I was visiting Japan th、uh, this time because.、Uh, Cha visits Los Angeles, but Yuta always stays in Tokyo, and I haven't seen him for a long time, so it was due. So I went. But yeah,、um, after ramen, we went to see the optometrist because you guys did notice that my eyes were getting a bit red,、um, more than usual. Part of it's allergies, but I knew there was something else that could be, you know, important or wrong or, I don't know, with my health or something. So I went to see an eye doctor. Yuta took me to his. I asked the doctor if the reason why my eyes are so red is like either my LASIK that I had in the past or is it my contacts. And then they said no to both. He says it's actually because I don't blink enough.、Um, the doctor said that I don't blink enough, and it's probably because I do hair and I stare at the strands for hours. A lot of times we work for like 10 to 14 hour days, and then I don't get a lot of breaks and I just stare at hair with my eyes open and all the chemicals. It, it can't be good for you. Oh, yeah, after that we went to. Um, some thrift shops and shopped around. I actually didn't buy much. I bought a pair of pants, but that's about it. I'm not big on shopping just because I get tired, so we just window shop basically, real quick. Around 7, we decided to have dinner.、Um, we went to the Okonomiyaki place, which is really fun because、uh, we don't have that in Los Angeles right now, or at least that I know of. There was a shop that I used to go to when I was younger, but it closed down. And then I never flipped the stuff by myself, but. Cha and Yuta was trying to get me to do it, and I tried, and it was a success. Yeah, sort of. 
Like, it was good. I didn't break it. It looked okay. Um, man, I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> but yeah, after that, we went to karaoke. We sang some songs, very nostalgic. It was quite fun. We, we drank and karaoke until about 1 a.m. And then they got really tired. So, so they went home. I actually went out with my friends. Um, I went to... Where did we go? Oh, well, yeah. I went to Shibuya. No, no. Yeah, I went to Shibuya with my friends. Uh, Yusuke invited me, and then we were just drinking outside a convenience store for an hour or so, um, until two, right? And then we went to Roppongi. Um, and then the club at Roppongi, it's like the biggest club I've ever seen in, in Japan. Usually when I go to clubs there, it's like tiny. You know, the bars are small, the clubs are small, everything is small in Japan. But this club was huge. Or I was really drunk. I don't know. I think one of the biggest reasons why I had so much fun was that like the people that I met, you know, the new friends that I made, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel judged. And it's really hard to explain, but uh, in Los Angeles, I have friends, I have family that I love, you know, my best friends, the person I was dating before, like I love them a lot and I care about what they think. But whenever I feel like dressing up or wearing the type of makeup I do or trying to experiment a little, I could feel a little bit of judgment from them, like a little hesitation. And it's it's the hardest thing to explain, but those little subtle things kind of stifle my creativity or want, like it makes me not want to, you know, venture out and try new things. And I get into this bubble where I like want to please them. And it makes you not want to try, um, you know, try to do more, to expand what you're already doing. But being in Japan, meeting those people, um, it was a different feeling because I don't know if they're judging me or not, but I didn't feel it, which is the difference. It's like, I can meet them, they dress different than I do, some conservative, some, you know, a completely different style. And it was like the feeling where it's like, even if, we're different and we wouldn't wear what the other person's wearing, it was okay. And it left room to experience the night without feeling, I don't know, like I didn't feel like I was being pulled back. So I was. it was a carefree feeling, I, I enjoyed myself. It was crazy, we partied till 9 a.m., drank a lot, so you know, it was one of those things that I'll remember forever. The next day, I woke up at 7 p.m. <laughs> I slept through the whole day. It was, I don't know what happened, but when I was checking Instagram, <laughs> the new friends I, I made was already texting me. It was like, oh yeah, we're going to club already. Uh, are you coming out tonight? And I didn't. I'm not, I'm not hardcore like that. Like they're freaking crazy. I love them. I hope I, I'll be like that one day, you know? <laughs> Cause like we partied till 9 a.m. And then I woke up and they're already at the club. How'd they do that? How'd they do that? Uh, yeah, it was, it was cool. I slept through that day. I had um, dinner real quick with Yusuke, and then I enjoyed the moments that I had in Japan a lot. The next day was uh, time to fly back. Um, Cha hung out with me that day for my last few hours in Tokyo, and then she sent me off at the airport. Um, it was it was nice. It was simple. Not a lot happened because I was only there like three or four days, but overall my experience was really good. I think it's one of those things that, you know, maybe it's all in my head, but yeah, this trip is what I needed because it allowed me to let go a little and reminded me of a time where I was younger and just focused on myself, focused on my career. I didn't care what people think because honestly, I didn't have that many friends to care about. And then the friends I made, I love them, love them to death. I wanted to be like them so much that I was hesitant on being myself. But yeah, have you noticed, I've been a little bit more open lately. I've been more optimistic again because after that vacation that I finally had, I had more passion and motivation to continue. But that feeling, that feeling where I was just experiencing things and not really worried about what happens next, um, not worried about tomorrow and then the workload that is to come. I was just in the moment, being myself, 
experiencing new things, being happy with just the people that's around me, that feeling I really want to project, that feeling I really want you to understand and I want everyone around me, my friends, to, to experience too. But yeah, um, thank you for listening to my story. I'll probably have to finish my makeup real quick, but yeah, um, I guess that's all I have to say about Tokyo because I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I love you guys. I really do. I started my YouTube channel, I think, about 10 months ago or so, and a lot has changed. Um, I understand myself a lot more, and I continue to grow towards positivity. And I know it sounds cheesy, but I know I know it, it does sound cheesy, but in 2018, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been asking the same question at the end of my video, which is, what happened this week or today that made you smile or laugh? And it's such a small question, but it's really important to me. Um, it's important to me to ask myself and to read others because um, it's like when I was depressed, uh, it was hard for me to remember those small things. Um, it, w it was really hard. It's like maybe a thousand things would happen and then it's good. But that one thing that was bad just like ruined my day and I don't remember any, any of the good. But having that kind of mentality where at the end of the day you reflect on the day and you think about the good part. That, that little moment, like even if it's a second that made you smile, is, is a positive spark in your day. And I really do feel like that's what pushes me to the next day. Uh, because when I am aware that good things happen, it allows me to accept more positive things to happen the next day. Um, um, yeah, it's good practice. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say, but it's okay because I guess this is part of my diary. Um, <laughs> uh, remember, remember to always focus on positive progression and when negativity happens, it's okay to say fuck you to negative things, move on, and go towards the things that are good. But yeah, I'm gonna go finish up my makeup. I guess that's it.